Meditation teaches us to pause, to go within, to connect with universal love and to resurface refreshed and full of potential. This was said by Daji, the global guide of heartfulness meditation. So how do we pause? Today to teach us the power of pause, we have a very special person. Hello, Rachel. Thanks for joining us today. Hi, Purnima. It's so good to be here. Thank you. Thank you for coming, Rachel. For the first time, us GLOW is an acronym for Genuine Loving Outstanding Women, and it's a series of webinars to learn meditation from the comfort of our homes. Heartfulness meditation teaches heart-based meditation and uh, various other techniques to help us find that inner balance, joy, harmony, and we meditate in the presence of yogic transmission or pranahuti, as they say in Sanskrit. So welcome to this webinar today as we learn a little bit about how to pause, how to meditate and how to, you know, find that beautiful joy, which sometimes is elusive. So let me introduce Rachel. Rachel Omira is a transformation and leadership coach who empowers professionals to learn and build emotional intelligence skill to thrive at work and beyond. Her book, Pause, was named as 2017's top business books for your career. And it was featured in New York Times, Wall Street Journal and on a TEDx stage. Hi, Rachel. Hello, Pranima. So good to be here today. Thank you for having me. So Rachel, how did you come to learn the power of pause? Yeah, yeah. So as you mentioned, I, I work in the tech industry and I've been at Google for 13 years. I'm still there. Things weren't always going great for me though. Uh, nothing like it is today. So several years ago, I was doing my my job managing a team of customer support uh, folks, and for whatever reason, I was getting feedback that I wasn't meeting expectations. And this wasn't for a lack of trying. Like many of you, I prided myself on achievements. I was doing these things. Like I, you said I, you mentioned my MBA. I had that. I was a national champion for rowing, and so I kept trying really hard. But I was getting feedback that I wasn't. I didn't have executive presence and that I wasn't a clear communicator up, down and across the organization. I wasn't clarifying and helping this new team I was leading build out what they needed to do for technology support. And so I kept feeling really frustrated and almost like a failure until one day my manager sat me down and said, Rachel, I don't know if this job was a fit for you. You might want to consider doing something else. And that wasn't a huge surprise to me, but it was my wake up call. And I went home that Friday evening. That was a Friday night in, in off, the office. And I, I went and talked to two good friends over the weekend. And one of them casually mentioned, doesn't Google have a leave of absence program? And so sure enough, they did. And I asked for that, got an approval. But during those three months that I took off, I I actually didn't have any training in, in mindfulness or meditation or emotional intelligence. I actually chose not to fill up my schedule with what I was uh, doing. I, I was knowing that was what got me there in the first place, traveling, being really busy, to-do lists, things that were good and fun, but not necessarily helping me be more present. And so the how I found the power of the pause was simply through <laughs> really like stumbling into knowing I needed one. And and uh, I call a pause any intentional shift in behavior, by the way. So it doesn't need to be a long-term um, break at all. In fact, most of us don't have that luxury for sure. So looking back now, what I can tell you is that I know that I, I, the reason I was I was spinning out, feeling feeling like a failure, feeling frustrated, and not meeting expectations was because I really wasn't present. Meaning I was either always thinking about the future. Oh, like, what do I need to do next? What's on my to-do list? All right, here's the three or five things I need to finish. Or I was in the past thinking about why did I do this? Why did I say that? I should have done, I could have done, I would have done this. Um, oh, if I'd only spoken up in the meeting, or if I'd only asked this question or looked this way. I mean, the silly things I was thinking. So all of that meant I was not present. I wasn't aware of how I felt in the moment. I didn't know even prior to my big wake up call with my boss that maybe things weren't going well and I could actually tune in to know how I felt because I didn't want to feel it. It was, it was 
uncomfortable and unpleasant to feel that loss of control and, and thinking like I was doing a bad job. And the reality was, it wasn't that it was just because I wasn't present, I wasn't aligned with what mattered to me. And so I took myself out of that situation. But like I said, most of us don't have that. So I think like knowing now the power of pause and knowing intentional shifts of behavior or even mindfulness, which I learned when I came back, I'm, I'm now, I'm now pretty sure that, yeah, if I was more present in the first place or had some of these tools, I'm pretty sure I wouldn't have needed a six, a three month break. I would have been able to course correct much earlier and probably never even leave, but I didn't know that. And now that's what I help other people do is to teach them how to use these tools so that they can align and really serve and, and really feel good and, and thrive every day, moment by moment, as you create this, what I call a pause mindset. Thank you, Rachel. Thank you for sharing your personal journey. And it was very inspiring to see the way you actually paused. But for the rest of us, can you tell us what are some of the signs which can, we can look for to actually take a pause or take a break? I wouldn't want to use the word break, but how do we actually pause? Yeah, and I think you can see my screen here. I'm just going to mm -hmm. share my five signs. So, so the five signs are here and these are in the book pause. They all happen to me. So I invite you uh, as the listener to just go along with me and maybe you can check off any that you feel right now. Maybe there's one here, maybe there's all five, but these are, I think the signals. So if you feel even one of these, then it's time to intentionally shift your behavior. And I think all of us are especially feeling number four with coronavirus and the pandemic uh, a challenge occurs, <laughs> meaning there might be a, a global pandemic <laughs> or it could be a, a health care challenge, um, a physical challenge, could be something like that. But the first one that I, I talk about is that you used to love what you do and now you don't love it. Now you loathe it. And simply think of that like, you know, you used to find joy in the day and now it's harder. And the second one is that someone tells you to change. Like my boss told me this wasn't a fit my, or, you know, it doesn't have to be about work, but it can be. Uh, and, and, and just kind of gives you that little nod. Well, something needs to change. And maybe you give that to yourself. Like you're like, I can't keep going like this. Mm -hmm. uh, it's not working out for me. I'm not willing to live my life this way. Mm -hmm. Number three is you have a technology intervention. Again, it's you or someone else, but all this one is, is knowing that uh, you're on your devices a little too often, you know, and we're all feeling that I think these days, but maybe uh, someone you care about is like, you know, you are never really with me. You're always checking your Facebook or you're scrolling through the internet or your email. We talked about number four and number five is an opportunity appears, which is really that maybe uh, desire to try something different. Maybe it's a hobby or uh, a, a creative interest. It could be your passion project. Uh, it could be something that you've been wanting to do for years, but you've been putting off. These are things that I think cultivate a uh, intentional shift in behavior. And all of those, I think, lead to new insights that can then help you to shift your life a little bit or just tweak it in small ways that feel more satisfying so you have more impact so that you feel more joy and that you can create and connect in the ways that you want. Thank you so much, Rachel. As uh, you explained that very nicely, very beautifully, I'm already getting a question from one of the participants. What gets in the way when we want to pause, when we ought to pause? Most women put themselves last or you feel guilty. There's a sense of guilt that maybe I should go last or I don't, I can't put myself first. And that's a belief. That's something that isn't necessarily true. And so for women, I think we're used to doing that. We're used to putting others first, whether it's our children or a partner or the family. Uh, it, and so that's the system. And so for women, it's really important to recognize we need to put ourselves first. The system needs to change 
so that we can thrive and help others. I think of it like, I mean, the, the analogy is the plane with the oxygen mask. You put your oxygen mask on first and then the, the children can, can then function. And it's the same in our lives. And women, I think, take the burden of thinking we need to take on more. And that that is, oh, that sometimes can work, but the reality is to sustain ourselves, especially now with 24 seven working or like global time zones and per coronavirus working from home, things are shut down. So much is different. The old model doesn't fit the new paradigm. And, I, and, and so, so for women, I think we really need to pay attention to this because if we don't change, if we don't shift, things will not get better. We will continue to have $190 billion in healthcare due to burnout and diseases that are a result of feeling stress, like type two diabetes, high cholesterol, um, heart disease, even premature death before the age of 45. These are all attributed to stress and women take the brunt of it. So I know it's not easy. It's not like a quick fix, but I think the first step is to give yourself permission as a woman to ask yourself like, well, what would, what would, what would that mean? Or what would that look like if I put myself first? It doesn't have to be a huge thing. It could be you give yourself five minutes in the morning before you go to make breakfast for your family. It might mean journaling for five minutes. I did that right before this call. It's my, it's my morning here as we're recording. And even though I was just like three minutes, it helped me frame like what my thoughts, what was in my head and help me get clear on what I want to do today and just how I want to be. So, so it's about thinking about how it could be different, but giving yourself permission. And if you're thinking like, oh, that'll never happen, or that's not possible, or my culture isn't okay with that, then that might be true right now. But again, it's, it's like we, 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 we are creatures of what our belief systems are. And so we need to take personal responsibility for what matters to us. And so I, like maybe as another woman, Pranima, like what are your thoughts on that? We are in the midst of a COVID pandemic. It was just getting over. It is coming back. We got into so many lockdowns. We are ending different lockdowns. So pause, don't pause. You know, what does it even matter in living this time in history and civilization? We all have our own personalized aspect and perspective, but the reality is to keep going now, especially 24 seven working, um, I call, you know, I call this the pause paradox where we think we don't pause or we can't pause or it's not allowed. And the reality is we actually need to create that so that we can move forward in ways that we feel good and that are sustainable. Mm -hmm. So a recent study came out around coronavirus and, and stress levels. And what was found was women's stress levels increased nearly 20% while men's job stress increased almost 2%. So what do you think about that, right? Like here we are, it's 20 X times more. And this might be accountable by the way, because women are working from home or bearing the brunt of facilitating children's online studies and, and school uh, and preparing meals and cleaning from home all of that. So there's just more to do. And that's definitely also adding to feeling, feeling the burden of stress, but decreased motivation where women also feel 31% le um, less motivated and men feel 21% less motivated. Time to create that, what we need to do for ourselves so that we can manage and work through it and get support, get help and support that we need, which, whether it means tuning into this webinar, which is a pause, and learning about what could be different because it's about the possibility and it's maybe one little thing you can do different moving forward. Thank you, Rachel. So on that note, can you tell us a few tips? Can you tell us how can we actually pause? How can we actually pause? And I mentioned the pause paradox, which I think is really what, what I mean by that is we think when, if we, sl if we pause, we'll, we'll decrease productivity. We won't be as productive and we'll look like slackers. We'll look like we're not working hard. And my challenge to all of you is 
that it's a paradox. It's actually just what our system and our, our, our beliefs are. The reality is we need to pause and be in service to the doing. Think of it like every time you pause a moment or a, uh, it can be even a risky conversation. It's something that fuels you. It feels nourishing. That is uh, one, one way to bust through this myth, the pause paradox, because we need to do it. And always on isn't working as we can see from the health statistics. And it's also counterintuitive. We'll think we slow down or not as, and, as effective. And that's just not true. It actually, how many times have you done something like taking a quick break, a two minutes uh, to go outside or do something fun or have a laugh, right? Where we get out of that task mode, we feel better. We do things more enjoyably. We, we feel more um, satisfied. And so that's what I want to remind you of is that, and we can create the and establish boundaries, limits, and expectations, which I think lead to that. And so pausing is part of the solution, like you're saying. When we do that, we have 40% more creative ideas. Uh, we can, our, our minds have a chance to wander. And that's important to us as humans. We need to balance out the, the doing with, with the being and we're um so ways of pausing are a bunch here and the first one is to name a feeling so i want to give all of you permission right now to name a feeling like give yourself permission to feel and a lot of times we just don't do that we're either too busy or we don't think it's okay and so my training here, uh, I, I work with five primary emotions, which are listed here. So there's joy, fear, sadness, anger, hurt. And I invite you to write those down, maybe have them handy going forward, but there's no order to them. Joy, fear, hurt, sadness, anger. And there's no right or wrong. There's no good or bad. There's no positive or negative. That's the first thing we know. This is all data. And so just to name a feeling in the moment, we need to, when we do that, we go in our body. We actually have to go in our bodies to feel how we feel. And you might not know how you feel and you might want to explain it, or there might be some, like some really intense emotions. So I just invite you to name it and just say, I feel, well, sad. I feel sad. I'm not getting what I want to do today done. And I'm a little hurt because that's not happening. So you might notice new feelings that come up, but this is one of the most profound tools I've learned in my life in emotional intelligence that have helped me be more connected to myself. And when we're more connected, when we're feeling we're present. So going back to not being present, you know, when we're rushing around doing a hundred things, we're not present to how we feel usually, or we're, we're, we're overriding them or we're numbing them out or we're avoiding them. And so this is a really big skill. It takes time, but the best way to start is to just name a feeling once a day, and that's a pause. And even as you're doing your mindful sit, as you're meditating, you could just ask yourself, what am I feeling right now? You don't have to explain it. Just go fear or joy, sadness, anger. Oh, I'm feeling calm. It must be more like joy. Mm -hmm. Joy can be subtle, like calm. So that's a big one. Um, and I would invite all of you to try that. Belly, Beth, Breath pausing, I think, is a great one as well, where I know you lead these sessions, Pranima, and they're beautiful. So it's the same idea where you can actually, if you want to do this with me, just go ahead and uncross your legs and uncross your arms. If you want to close your eyes, you're welcome to do that. Yeah. And just take a deep breath, inhaling through your nose, pushing your uh, diaphragm out, your, your stomach out, and exhaling through your mouth slowly. Maybe a little pursed lips, like you're blowing through a, a straw. Open your eyes if they were closed. Mm. How do you feel? Do you feel any different? Yeah, I feel rested. Just that one breath. So you can start with one breath. You can work up to 10. That's a great pause. And we always have our breath. It's never gone and it's free and it's available. It's just about being off of autopilot. Same with a body scan. And I love to do the body scan sitting down to just feel imagining like the parts of my body are relaxing as I, as I mentally go through them, like feeling my jaw relax, 
going to my neck and so on and so forth. Uh, you can you can time yourself for this, but I think it's just nice to do maybe between the transition. Maybe you're going from a meeting to lunch or another meeting to another meeting and you give yourself 30 seconds even to do this. Um, I, I think digital devices, I call these a DDP, a digital device pause. That is so important right now, especially as we're always on laptops or phones, and we need to create the rules around this. And our uh, a little bit about the science here, our brains are wired for feeling the rewards or get, wanting the rewards that we get when we hear the chime or scroll and see a like on uh, social media, because that's releasing dopamine. That's the neurotransmitter, but the but the issue with that is dopamine is really fast and quick. It goes away within seconds, 20 seconds. So it's not, it's, that doesn't last and it doesn't make us feel good in the long term. So we need to come up with better ways of feeling satisfied. And we want to change that. So we need to actually cre create true connection, for, for example, and limit social media, potentially have like a tech-free night. I know for me, that's something I've tried. And I, instead of, instead of having the TV on, I'm, I read a book or there's some, some games now, like board games, cards, uh, can be conversations. It doesn't need to be about technology 24 seven. So here's some ideas that you might have. I also don't sleep with my phone in the bedroom. It's in the hallway. Mm -hmm. And that just feels good. Like a peace of mind, like, okay, I'm not even tempted to look at it. And I don't, I don't want to. So I invite you to think about maybe one way that you could have a digital device pause for yourself. It might be like not checking your phone at a meal. <laughs> uh, gratitude pausing is really powerful. I know a lot of you practice some gratitude at this point, but being grateful for one thing, even today is helpful. So just think right now as you're with me, mm -hmm. maybe you have one thing you're grateful for. What could be that one thing? Mm -hmm. For me, it's being on this webinar, Pranima, and spending time with your audience because I feel like all of us could use a little more pausing. <laughs> so thank you. And when we share the gratitude, we actually are uh, creating the neural connections for oxytocin, which is that feel good hormone, which is like when the when a mother is breastfeeding their child uh, or you have love, it's the love hormone. And that's the long lasting satisfaction center that's activated in our brain. So just know that that's a powerful way, way more powerful than digital devices um, to offer a pause and to, and to activate more satisfaction. There's some science on this slide. So another research study uh, says if you do three minutes a day, so that's six 30 seconds blocks where you think of something grateful or you say thank you to someone, that will create new ways of thinking and being with, with yourself after two weeks. Mm. So your new, your new neural plasticity starts to shape after three minutes a day, after two, after two weeks, like permanently, if you keep it up. So that's huge. And, uh, and essentially the bottom line is gratitude is a gate. It's like a gateway drug. I call it to joy. Brene Brown did found this out in her research on shame. And, uh, basically the bottom line is there's not a more powerful way to start feeling more joy to then just express gratitude. So it's a very, very great way to start. Being mindful in the moment, I think is an awesome practice where you can begin to just do something that you already do. So let's say you're cooking a meal, you're preparing a meal and you're cutting vegetables. And so that can be mindful. That can be you getting off of autopilot because remember it's a choice, but maybe you're like being careful obviously with the knife, but you're noticing and you're hearing the chopping board you're hearing um, the sounds outside your window. You're noticing the colors of the carrots and the spinach and so on and so forth. And that's being mindful. That's allowing your five senses to be invoked. Mm. So here's some ideas 
I want to share on the slide just about what you could do in the moment. And maybe you already do some of these, which is great. So if there's one that you like to do, awesome. If there's already ones you're doing, then lovely. Um, I don't know, Pranima, do you have any that you do now that are mindful pauses that you like to do during the day? Yeah, I sit for five minute meditations, sometimes 10 minute meditations. So those are really good for me. I enjoy those moments. Nice. Yeah, that's super powerful. And I notice when I do that, the day goes, it's worth it. Like I'm worth it to do it. Uh, I, I think for me, it's also when I'm out, when I'm walking, I try to be mindful um, in the walk. So I notice the sounds. Again, it's just anything you bring in your five senses to what you see, what you hear, what you feel, what you um, taste and what you, what you listen to here. Yeah. Thank you, Rachel. Those were some amazing tips and I'm tempted to try a couple of more pauses, more types of pauses in my life. Thanks. Those were really, really amazing. I was reading a little bit about you before this webinar and I saw that you are uh, an expert in emotional intelligence. So how does this work with pause? The thing about emotional intelligence is that, uh, you know, this is the area of expertise that I'm, that I have studied and this was created by two researchers 25 years ago, Peter Salovey and John Mayer. It's been popularized by Daniel Goleman, who wrote the Emotional Intelligence book. It's only 25 years old, but the idea is that when we are pausing, again, it's intentional shifts in behavior, there's four components of emotional intelligence. And the first one is self-awareness. So we're building our self-awareness. We're knowing how we feel. We're, we're, we're taking in um, our environment. We're connecting the mind and the body. We're also uh, building on that for self-management. That's the second step. So this is about how are we in, in those emotions? Are we able to express them responsibly? Meaning like staying out of drama or like saying, I feel sad without blaming or shaming someone else or being the victim. Um, it's expressing fully, fully to your, to your content. Social awareness is the third step of emotional intelligence. So again, that's reading other people's emotions. How are they doing? Being in relationship with others is the fourth one, relationship management. So this is social skills, listening, mm -hmm. empathy. And when we're pausing, we're allowing the space and especially building that foundation of self-awareness to cultivate emotional intelligence. And emotional intelligence is the number one skill now um, around the world that's been looked at for things like interview questions and, and, and new hires, because we realize as leaders, we need to be better influencers in our lives, no matter what your job is, no matter what your title is. And so pausing is a perfect way to get started and it will lead to new insights probably about yourself and others as you do so. A couple of questions from our participants, which came on email. And uh, when we categorized them, there was one common thread which we found, like many of us have no time to pause. So how do we actually pause when we don't have time to pause? That was kind of, you know, very interesting. So yeah. what, what, do you, what do you say for that? I know. And, and believe me, we've all been there. I have days where I don't, I don't want to do that. So uh, there's a great quote that I like to think about, which has made me reshape how I think about pausing. So... Gabby Bernstein, she's an author here in the U.S. and a spiritual teacher. She says, if you don't have a minute to meditate, then then how do you how do you expect to not feel like crap? <laughs> so basically, she says, like if you don't have a minute, one minute, <clears throat> then do you have a minute to feel like crap? Because you're gonna feel like crap. <clears throat> and I totally agree. And so we have to create this time. This goes back to the pause paradox and putting ourselves first. And if we don't have time to meditate, then my best suggestion, my favorite suggestion is to start with those mindful moments because you're not creating new time. You're just being more aware. You're getting off of autopilot, but it's, it takes effort and it takes intention and it's hard. So all of those things you like are your choice and they are what you can decide to do, but we have to know that it's a choice. We have to know we don't have to go through the motions and be on autopilot, but we need to create and be disciplined to say, okay, for today, I'm doing 
30 seconds where I'm eating mindfully or I'm brushing my teeth mindfully and then start from there and build from that. Thank you, Rachel. That was very helpful. As parents, how do we, how do we even think of pause? This is the next question. Exactly. I think, so I'm not a parent. I don't have my own children. However, I have many parents as clients and I've had nieces and nephews and I think it's the same thing. You know, we're in 24 seven parenting, especially right now. So again, it's about putting your oxygen mask on first and putting yourself first to know this will help you with your day and managing what you need to do, but you need to create time for yourself. And uh, one tip I can offer is to think of one, one thing that you need that you would consider your non-negotiable for the day. Like what's one thing that gets you through your day that you can look forward to or that you enjoy? It might be, um, it might be a meditation. It might be two minutes of meditating. It might be a walk. It might be a book. It might be connecting with a certain special loved one. Whatever that is, uh, write it down because that's your beginning of you creating the boundary of what you need. And as parents, our kids can pick up on when we feel stressed or drained or exhausted. And so why not be the leader? Why not be the role model as yourself who's feeling energized and refueled to teach them to put themselves first. And, and it's not selfish. That's the other thing I want to say. This is self-care. So putting yourself first, meaning creating space and time for you so that you can be at your best. Who wouldn't want that for their children? Who wouldn't want that for their loved ones? But you have to lead by example because you're the role model. You're the parent. And it doesn't need to be anything stressful. You could just say, okay, I'm going to, I'm going to invite my child to take two mindful breaths with me today. Or I'm going to teach them the five feelings and we're going to think about it together. And then you give them permission to, to check in with themselves and you can do the same. That was very useful. Thank you, Rachel. You know, so we take a pause so that we don't feel stressed out or we don't feel burnt out. But what do we do when we've already felt that? This is pretty common, I think, now. So if you're noticing you're feeling stressed out, I think the best thing to do is to name a feeling. Remember the five feelings, fear, hurt, joy, sadness, anger. What you're doing with that is you're, is a couple things. One is you're validating yourself, how you feel. You're acknowledging how you feel. So that's self-validation, which is affirming, which feels good. And then... When you name a feeling, you're using your prefrontal cortex, you're using your thinking brain, which makes the feeling less intense. And that's, um, that's from Dan Siegel and his research. So the idea is that it's going to happen. Burnout and stress, or uh, sorry, burn, stress and overwhelm can lead to burnout. And there, you know, there's a spectrum there. But if you're already feeling that, then I think it's a great time to try a daily pause and just assess what's happening and be curious, bring in your curiosity and your kind voice. This is not about critical mind and saying like, oh, I'm so stressed. Why am I stressed? And I'm laughing because like, that's not going to serve you. So just saying like, I feel really, I feel really f a lot of fear because I keep feeling stressed and I feel sad. Um, what, what can I do right now or today that will help me feel a little more replenished. I'm gonna, I'm gonna like journal for five minutes. I'm gonna listen to my favorite song. Um, I'm gonna cry. All of that is valid and important to honor for yourself. So I wanted to connect and allow the Glow Women uh, an opportunity to go deeper and to learn more. So I have a free guidebook. It's called a Blueprint. The three keys, um, actually, it's called the daily, sorry, it's called the daily checklist. And this is in my Facebook community. It's a private group for women. It's free, of course. So if you go to tiny, tinyurl.com slash pause sisterhood, uh, you can join us. It's also on Facebook. If you, if you search for be the pause, it's there. And it's uh, something that you just type in a few questions just to make sure you're a human and I'll, I'll let you in. But we have hundreds of women in there and our goal is to support each other, to be a like-minded community where we can all rise together so that we can live our best lives and feel empowered, feel energized, <clears throat> um, have that well-being that we're craving. 
So every Friday I do a video for a tip of pausing or we do a pause together and I invite all of you to join me there in the Be The Pause Sisterhood. Thank you so much, Rachel. Thanks for your invitation and I'm joining the Pause Sisterhood. One more thing, so the, the checklist is in the files folder. So it's a one sheet PDF and it has a lot of the daily pauses we talked about today. So you can use it as a checklist. You can check off, maybe you do one a day and you can keep track and try different things and see what works best for you. So Rachel, on that note, let's have a experiential session of heartfulness, relaxation and meditation right now. Please follow my voice. We'll have the heartfulness relaxation at first and towards the end of it, we'll have a short meditation session where I will request you to meditate on the light in the heart. So let's begin together. Sit comfortably and close your eyes. Let's begin from the toes. Relax your toes. Feel an energy from Mother Earth rising through your toes, through your feet. As this energy rises up, it relaxes your legs, relaxes your cuff muscles. As this energy moves up, relaxing your knees, relaxing your thighs. This energy moves up and relaxes your hips, your stomach. Now your attention is on your back. Feel your lower back relaxing as this energy moves up. Gently relaxing your upper back. Bring your attention to your chest, relaxing your chest. This energy moves up, relaxing your shoulders. And as it flows through your arms, it relaxes your upper arms, elbows, wrist, palm, fingers, and fingertips. This energy oozes out of your fingertips. Your entire arm is completely relaxed now. Feel this energy rising through your neck, relaxing your neck. The cricks and tension and discord in your neck are slowly melting away. Your neck is completely relaxed. Feel this energy rising up to your head. The facial muscles are relaxing. Your jaws, lips, cheeks, nose, eyes, ears, forehead. Feel the tip of your head. Your face is completely relaxed. As your whole body completely relaxes, scan it once. If any part of your body needs any attention, let this energy relax the part of the body. Gently bring your attention to your heart. Heart, which is the source of love and light. Let's meditate on the source of light in the heart for a few minutes. If your attention wanders, gently bring it back again to the source of light in the heart. And this light is drawing you, pulling you deeper inwards into your meditation. Let's meditate together.
Gently open your eyes when you're ready. Thanks for joining us in this heartfulness relaxation and meditation session. There will be a few resources towards the end of the webinar to continue your heartfulness journey. I thank all the participants for joining us today in this heartfulness relaxation meditation. So Rachel, as we end this webinar, what are your closing thoughts? My closing thoughts are the following. Remember to put yourself first because you matter and you're worth it. We're all worth it. And it's not selfish. It is self-care and, and it is our duty. It is our birthright to matter. And that is, I think the first and foremost, most important thing to know. And pausing is a gift. It's a gift you can give yourself. It's a gift you can give others. And it's in service to your doing. And I think can lead to insights, to new, new things of feeling the way you want to feel and live the life you want to live. And so I'm excited to help anyone get to that on their journey and, enjoy, and invite, invite you to take part in the power of pause. Thank you. Thank you so much, Rachel. It's a pleasure to be with you today. Thank you, Pranima.